Today's quick singing tips is all about how we might approach a more classical singing style. Now, even within the classical music genre in opera, there are still different demands of how we approach each style. For example, singing Renaissance, Baroque is very different to how we might sing German Lied or Art Song, which is very different to how we might sing a big Wagnerian opera. However, this is just a few quick tips of how you could get into a more classical style, a more operatic vocal setup. So I'll tell you some more demands of the style, technically some things to think about, and then some easy ways to access a more classical sound. So with all of those classical styles I just mentioned, none of them use microphones at all. And that's one of the big things with classical opera singing. We need to amplify our sound to make it heard at the back of a large concert hall or maybe even over an orchestra. So I'll just sing you a little bit of my classical singing voice that I trained for four years at a conservatoire. This is what I used to study all the time. It might be very different to someone else's, but then you can match up some of the qualities that I'm using and I can tell you how I access those. So this is a more legato lyrical piece. Gold is a fine thing for those who admire And then one of my favourite more staccato, upbeat songs, bizarrely in the same key. Stizzo mi o stizzo, voi fate il borioso, ma no, ma non vi più giovare, bisogno al mio divieto, starchetto. And that's somewhere where I might actually go into thick folds or chest voice. Keto, which I'll come to in a moment. So the qualities of opera, classical singing. As a female singer, I tend to use uh, my thin folds, my head voice more often than not. When I was training, we would never use thick folds, chest voice really, but it's becoming more popular in classical singing that yeah, those low notes might benefit, give emphasis from a bit of a thicker sound. If you are testosterone influenced, it's likely to actually, you'll be singing a lot of yours in uh, thick folds. However, then you might use thin folds to access a different sound, a different quality. So in general, when we hear those, oh, um, non-testosterone influenced opera singers, then it's likely they're using thin folds or their head voice for probably about 95% of the time. So what are the other technical setups of classical opera? Oh, what helps get that more open sound? And actually that's having a bit of a lower larynx position but we need to be careful how much we lower the larynx. Often for a more classical sound, people will say, oh, just yawn and you'll feel your larynx lower. However, if you yawn, oh, your tongue is also gonna go back. Oh. I don't think that's the most appealing sound and it definitely isn't sustainable. So if you stick your tongue forward um, in between your lips and then yawn, that still gives the lowering of the larynx, but it's not too much and our tongue isn't forcing back as well as we don't want tongue tension and we want to be in control of our larynx. Another way to access that slightly lower larynx is to come up with a more sobby sound. So if you think of a bit more, oh, something's really sad. We're really like crying a little bit and you feel that larynx move down. It's not that wah, wah, whiny cry, which we could use for twang a more sobby cry. However, we then lose a little bit of bright resonance. So we want to counteract this with a little bit of AES narrowing, which is at the back of the mouth. If you want to find out more about that, check out my twang video from last week because I go into a lot more detail. However, if you're accessing the opera quality, you can think of a sob, <laughs> this sounds a bit strange, a sob, but like we're, we're smiling as well. We're trying to stop trying to stop our sob being too sad. So we've got a happy, happy, bright sob, which sounds ridiculous when I'm speaking. However, if I do it when I'm singing, oh, I can just imagine my facial expressions then because they felt really stupid. But let me put that into the singing. Gold is a fine thing for those who admire 
already that feels so much easier when I'm actually thinking about it. I didn't take a good enough breath though, which leads me on to breathing for um, opera and classical singing. The phrasing in classical pieces tend to be a little bit longer. They tend to be a little bit more demanding, more challenging, so we really do need to think about our breathing when we're approaching this style. People will say breathe from the diaphragm, that doesn't really make biological sense. However, when we breathe in, releasing our abdominal muscles, feeling our ribs moving out, so that on our exhale, we can then engage a little bit of lower abdominal and core support to pace our breath throughout the phrase. It can also be useful if you've got a demanding phrase, um, something a little bit more higher, powerful, to engage a little bit of anchoring, um, switching on the muscles of the back as well. And of course, I'll link to some videos I've got about those. Um, just going back to previously, talking about the happy sob as well. One thing when you think of that, oh, happiness and that space at the back, um, that also lifts our soft palate. And that's what gives us this loud, bright resonance. Having the narrowing of the AES, slightly lower larynx and a higher soft palate creates all this space for the sound to bounce off. And imagine our mouth is like a cave and all the acoustics are bouncing off and that's what makes it so loud. We also want to keep a nice relaxed jaw. Possibly when we're going higher, we need to find a little bit more space. What was I singing before? If we try and do that note with a smaller, more forward place sound, oh, not nice at all. So we need to maybe find a little bit more release, but it's not about forcing the mouth open. It's just letting the jaw relax so that your articulators can work and we can have a bit more open vowels. So that's the technical setup, but what about the stylistic musical demands of the genre? I mentioned thinking about more open vowels and also maybe these longer phrases. So often in this genre, there is more of a focus on the vowels rather than the consonants. When we're singing maybe more contemporary musical theatre, we're really kind of focusing on the words and the text. And although, yes, we definitely have to think about the text in opera and classical singing, we want to think about the vowels and how they all connect together. So each vowel needs to go right to the end of the next consonant when we're singing slower songs. Gold is a fine thing. Of course, if we've got the more staccato sound. There's lots of bounce in the consonants, but the vowels are still really fully formed. You'll also notice that I'm singing with quite a lot of vibrato. This is probably the style that uses the most vibrato. We can still think about when to add it and use it for colour, to add expression. However, it tends to naturally come in when we have this technical setup. There are different um, opposing muscles working together, and in order to get this amplification, vibrato often will naturally come in. So it might be that you're listening to more baroque or choral singing, you'll hear there's much less vibrato, it's much more pure. However, more um, operatic, big sounds have more vibrato. So there is some scope for how much you use and it's totally dependent on the pieces, the style, the teacher, conductor that you are working with. One other thing that um, we often use in more classical singing is smooth onsets, how we start the notes if we've got a vowel. The sound comes out of nowhere. Instead of using an aspirate with breath first or a glottal, we might use those for emphasis, but again, I'd say 95% of the time we use a smooth onset. So if you want to practice those, and again, another tool to get into this quality, using some maybe sigh sounds with a w and a y. Why? Yes! Why me? Why? Yes! So it's quite fun, I think, to just try out. And then lastly, expression. This music is all about the text, the poems, the storyline, as much as it is about the musical phrasing. So colouring, shaping those words as well is really important to the genre.
So if you want to do more classical singing, yes, this video might help you out. However, I really suggest that you have some lessons, work with a teacher and explore this genre for yourself. I teach a lot of students and only a handful of them are approaching the classical genre and it'd be such a shame for a lot of this music to die out. So I suggest you just go for it. Pick up a simple aria, see how it feels in your voice and of course, let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching Quick Singing Tips. Don't forget to hit subscribe for much more.